All right. Doesn't that sound so great? I can't wait to even drink this. This is so exciting. Uh, hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog. The adventures of craft beer and baseball. We are ripping and sipping every week, keeping baseball history alive. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 56 for May 25th, 2021. 2021 wherever you are watching us live today please give us a like and a comment let us know that you're out there and as always we'd appreciate if you if you subscribe and turn on those notifications some housekeeping before we start thank you to our patreon super supporter cowboy jack durango for his contribution to the beer baseball blog on the power hitter level also to super supporter rachel elnar on the power hitter level also, thank you to supporter Scott Loss. Check out his website, accidentalaliens.com, for his unique brand of comics and art. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter and help the efforts here at the Beer Baseball blog, simply go to our uh, Patreon page and search a Beer Baseball. We also have a uh, Etsy page where you can buy cool stuff like uh, stickers, buttons, and uh, beer coasters, and it all supports the Beer Baseball blog. Here is the lineup card for today. Batting leadoff is the VP of content development for the Beer Baseball blog, Angelo Trinidad. Welcome. Hey, Michael. Hey, everyone. 56 episodes strong. Let's keep the train on moving. And uh, we're having fun drinking some beer on a Tuesday evening. So uh, we thank you guys for joining. And uh, hope you guys are indulging alongside with us. Yes, yes. He is not here, but I'm going to give him a proper intro anyway. He is the field correspondent and senior research analyst at the Beer Baseball blog somewhere on an Orange County highway uh, getting to the studio. He's going to he's going to slide in. Uh, hopefully he's not going to slide in uh, like Jazz Chisholm today or um, uh, Marcelo Zuna, who uh, left with a uh, I think a uh, dislocated finger. Um, but hopefully he'll be safe and get in here because uh, we have some really interesting beers and some interesting uh, merch that we're going to um, promote tonight. So, Angelo, with that, what are you and what are we drinking tonight? All right. So I came back from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, a couple uh, now a couple weeks ago, uh, bearing gifts for um, for the beer baseball crew. So tonight we are drinking from Fat Bottom Brewing, uh, obviously in Nashville, Tennessee, their Music City Light, which is their light lager. Uh, this one's 4.7 ABV, so pretty comparable to any type of light beer. Um, and uh, the tagline for this is Our Town, Our Beer. So um, first time trying this. And um, actually, I took a sip just a second ago, and actually uh, it has a distinct, distinctively different taste from other light beers like your typical Coors, uh, Miller or Bud Light, um, and uh, I will be indulging in a couple of these throughout the show tonight. Yes, yes, and uh, I have a uh, a proper tall glass that I put this in, and you can see the how uh, the clarity of it is super, super nice, and uh, oh, just just everything like th this reminds me of like like a baseball beer, you know, one that yeah. you can enjoy like a few of these at a game and it, it won't wipe you out like a, like an IPA if, if you're to go for that first. Mm. Delicious. So yeah, this one's actually this this one's really good and um, I'm glad I was able to uh, bring back a little bit of Nashville um, back here to the beer basil plug and just more than just the beer too. So also our hats tonight. Yeah, let's take a look at these. So I'm wearing the uh, the game day alternate uh, hat with the red bill for the Nashville Sounds. And um, Michael is wearing the, um, uh, what's the, the event? The... Um, so it's uh, the Copa de Virgin. Copa, yeah, yeah, yep, there you go. And that's there. That's the Nashville Sounds uh, alternative logo for uh, for this line in this event. So, and Kevin is going to be uh, joining us in a little bit. He's wearing a throwback uh, Nashville Sound hat, which is actually really cool, also. So, yeah, brought back a little I, bit of Nashville for the crew. Love it, love it. How was that stadium? I know that you probably spoke a little bit about it last time, but like, uh, like I, I, I wanted to ask you more about it. We had so much uh, to talk about last yeah. week, but how how is that stadium? 
Yeah, gorgeous stadium, uh, relatively new. Uh, capacity is just over 10,000 fans. Great accessibility to downtown. Uh, great sight lines all around the stadium. Uh, some of the cool aspects of the park, the scoreboard, the HD scoreboard is in the shape of a guitar. Um, everything is, uh, as you can imagine, music themed. There's a um, there's an area there in uh, in left field called the or right field rather called um, uh, the music box. So I don't know exactly what that what that was. It wasn't occupied at the time uh, when we went, and um, they had a lot of uh, great food options. So we uh, I ended up uh, having the garlic fries, which you can never go wrong with, mm -hmm. and I got the barbecue brisket mac and cheese, which was served in oh, a geez. Nashville Sounds helmet, which was quite tasty. Wow. So great food, uh, great atmosphere, great vibe. Again, we talked about it last week. One craft beer cart or a couple craft craft beer carts, and um, uh, it was a sold out game, so lines were long for everything. So, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And that was I, I I didn't even mention this last time. That was like one of the uh, if not the first game that it was a hundred percent capacity. Correct. It was their home opener, and it was the first game at full capacity for. Uh, for for that team for the Nashville Sounds, so their first three games on the road, uh, not at full capacity, and this was the first game with a full capacity and no mask mandate. So mm, yeah, and 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 to add to it all, uh, Christian Yelich, Keston Hira, <laughs> they're playing. So it's D, D, you know. D Strange Gordon and Lars Newt Bar. That's right. That's right. Our favorite now. Our our, our favorite. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so th that's totally awesome. And thank you for th these are awesome. And, um, I'm also going to put it in, uh, this beer koozie that you also got us as well. So, I mean, that is killer. I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of 1978. That seems like, it seems like they've, they've been around longer than that. Um, yeah. but, um, now, now it's funny when you see 1978 being your age, Angela, is, is that, does that seem like a long time ago? Uh, yeah, it actually does. <laughs> so, and I, and I, and I know I'm the, 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 the youngest of the bunch here, but, um, I just, you know, one of my, one of my best friends growing up was born in, in their twins, actually, they were born in 1979. I used to think, oh my gosh, they were born so long ago, only four years older than me, whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 You know, it, it seems so, so far, uh, you know, back then when, when we were younger, but yeah, 1978 does seem like, uh, a very long time ago and uh, i am the youngest of the bunch here so uh, you guys will continue to well i'll continue to learn uh and and gain wisdom and knowledge of this wonderful sport from the two of you and uh, be able to offer you know a younger fans perspective too so. perfect yeah absolutely and uh it's funny because uh, i was gonna say like uh you don't know anything about jimmy carter and if you did you'd know that he had a, bro a brother who actually put out a craft beer and oh, wow. uh, Jimmy Carter is actually uh, responsible for overturning the uh, home brewer. Um, there's a that used to be illegal to homebrew, so he oh, turned wow. overturned that, and he's kind of known as the uh, kind of the the father of homebrewing. So that's awesome. uh, craft beer revolution. So there you go. So uh, I love I love filling in the gaps, um, but that was uh, during his uh, presidential regime, which was. Uh, uh, well, within 1978, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for this. Um, I, I, I said I was super ecstatic and I can't wait to uh, to dive into this and uh, get some more. So uh, Kevin's not here yet, but I'm going to start with um, this day in baseball history. Um, it, by the way, Kevin knows all the all the first ones I'm going to do right here because he was there. He, he lived um, it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, it's it's the stuff that's closer, like uh, like a couple like ten years ago that you know, he's kind of foggy about. But um, but he remembers this like it was yesterday. May twenty fifth, nineteen seventeen, at League Park, the Indians trailing five to nothing at the start of the bottom of the ninth, come back and beat the Yankees six to five. Uh, after Tris Speaker steals home on an 0-2 count to tie the score. Can you imagine? Wow. That, that is awesome. Uh, the New York hurler, Alan Russell, throws the next pitch to the backstop. Uh, and Bill, let's see, let's see if I can say this, Wamsgnass. That's actually what his name is. W-A-M-B-S-G-A-N-S-S. -S. 
Oh my God. Uh, with the winning run in Cleveland's incredible walk-off victory. Wow. What an exciting game that was 1917. And Kevin was there. Unbelievable. Man, I mean, the the excitement that must have been pumping through that stadium <laughs> when Kevin was there. Exactly, exactly. And he got to see the great Tris Speaker. That's true. May 25th, 1922, after being called out for trying to stretch a single into a double, Babe Ruth throws dirt into the umpire's eye, goes after a heckler in the stands, and finishes his tirade by standing on the dugout roof, calling the cr- calling the crowd, are you ready for this, Angelo? Yellow cowards. Ooh. Yes. Yellow-bellied cowards. Yes. Yeah, yellow-bellied <laughs> cowards. Uh, these actions will result in a one-game suspension. <laughs> And uh, this this may be, if you thought the one game suspension um, was good, the $200 fine, um, but ultimately it would also cost the Bambino his Yankee captaincy, uh, a position he has held for less than a week. Oh. Unbelievable. Speaking of old timers, Kevin Lyon. Yeah. Cracking it open, it, sliding yeah. in. You know what? I haven't been this excited for a show since. Did I ever tell you about the game I went to in May of uh, 1917 with Trish Speaker? <laughs> did I ever tell you about that game? <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Oh, well, you know, I, I'm always watching while I'm just, you know, while I can't, uh, as watching what I can driving home. Yes. Oh, can I backtrack? So that bottom, yes. um, they actually, I'm guessing it's similar for you. They actually had a, a, like a spot at a gate at the airport where you can just sit and have three or four of their beers. I didn't realize this was fat bottom at first. Yeah. Yeah. They had some really good beers and, and I think they had some you could buy to go. And it sounds like that's kind of like what you did, right? With this music city, right? Yeah. There's also a ton of construction going on at Nashville airports and there's like limited food options. Yeah. Everyone has limited inventory. So. Cause um, yeah, I, re- I remember I had, um, I'm looking at it now something called the Ruby. It's too bad you couldn't find that one because uh, Michael, if you get, I don't know if you got a chance for the show ends, but uh, if you look up the logo for the can, it's actually like a woman with a hat with the star on her on her on her hat, and oh, she's holding cool. a ball. Oh, right. And it's called Ruby. Right. That's cool. And that's an American Red Ale, and they also had one called Knockout, um, which is a girl again holding with a boxing glove on, flexing from the muscles, called Knockout IPA, which is good too. Awesome. Just wanted to throw that out there. And here's Nashville hat. This is the original Nashville Sounds logo. Um, along with this one on the koozie here, I don't know if you guys see this, this is great. Yes. Yeah, I, I, and, I love you mention it. I'm 100 years older than the Nashville Sounds. <laughs> I, I love the classic and timeless design on, on Kevin's hat. Yeah. I yeah. love yeah. the. I mean, even back then, you think about the creativity to include and incorporate the the bass clef in the uh, in the uh, in the logo. So, yeah. and it's very, it's subtle, but but really really classy at the same oh time, yeah so. no it definitely yeah. stands out yeah. for sure yeah I, I think brand. i mentioned last week that that new stadium is, is awesome i went to the old stadium i want to say in 2009 and i don't really remember that much about it so it must not have been that great <laughs> you know <laughs> but it's cool to go to a minor league game you know in nashville yeah. especially because we can't there's no triple a the well now but vegas is the only thing that's even close until you know sacramento and fresno came about yeah you know and even right. now fresno's you yeah, know fresno now it's single a demoted big time yeah Absolutely. And, and that stadium, that stadium is like, uh, I, I mean, it's a triple A stadium where it has like yeah. uh, a double oh, yeah. deck and uh, mm-hmm. it's super nice. And yeah, uh, yeah so uh, definitely. Oh, I, 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 uh, I'm remiss, but I wanted to give a shout out to some of the people out there. Uh, David, thank you for joining hey. us. Bubble Pug, Cowboy Jack Durango, Chad M. Thank you so much for joining Phil, my, my buddy Cover Lang out Cover. there. Thank you. Co- thank you for joining us. Uh, who else is out there? Uh, Colin Duncan, thank you so much for joining. We all appreciate it. Right, I'm late too. Yeah. yeah. That's well, my well, gimmick now, unfortunately. That's right. The five is, freeway is going to make me late like every week, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. You're doing the Lord's work. So uh, we're all proud of you. Well, I'm almost as old as the Lord, so... <laughs> Yeah, had a yeah, few swigs exactly. of beer with him at some point. Probably that game, probably this game in 22 with, you know, the babe losing his captain, the title of team captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May 25th, 1923, crossing the plate for 
the 1,741st time Ty Cobb surpasses Hannes Wagner's record for most runs scored in a career. The Georgia Peach will tally 2,245 runs during his 24-year tenure in the major leagues, a mark that stands until 2001 when Ricky Henderson breaks the record. Oh, yeah. Wow. Pretty cool. I was like, I remember, I'm like, is that record still stand? I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, it's, that's, that's, that's an insane record to even come across, but... Yeah. Well, as much as Ricky Stoll, yeah, I guess he, he's the one. I don't, and I'm assuming Ricky Stoll has that record. Yeah, and uh, you know that's what the fun part about this. You know, looking at these, kind of looking back and wondering if any of these, you know, any of these even exist anymore. It's kind of fun to look back at it. Yeah. May twenty fifth, nineteen thirty five, at Forbes Field, Boston Braves outfielder Babe Ruth, again on this date, hits three homers in a single. Uh, and a single in an 11 to seven loss to the Pirates in Pittsburgh. The Sultan of Swat's seventh inning solo shot off Gary Bush, a blast that clears the ballpark's roof will be the Bambino's 714th oh. and final home run. Wow. <clears throat> Wait, he had three home runs and three then that's it. Three home runs and single. Three ones in a game and then that's it. He had four hits in his very last game. He's like, he's like David Ortiz. I know. I gosh, no kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm like, you just leave a little in the middle of May. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Well, what a way to go out, I suppose. Totally. May 25th, 1941, 80 years ago, in a 10 to 3 victory over the New York, over New York at Yankee Stadium, Red Sox left fielder Ted Williams goes four for five, another uh, four hit game to raise his batting average to over 400 for the first time this season. The splendid splinter will finish the campaign batting 406. So, wow, he almost like hit 400 the whole season. Incredible. Wow. Yeah, 80 years. My gosh. 80 <laughs> years ago. And no one's able to do it. No, no. one. Was it, was, was it like George Brett came close? Like George Brett in, I want to say 1980, finished in the, around 390. Uh, of course, you have the, the one that, you know, the controversial one because of the strike was uh, the 394 Gwynn. batting average for uh, Tony Gwynn yeah. in the short shortened season, unfortunately, because who knows, he might have been able to make it if he, if he was able to keep playing. Yeah, wasn't there like some like rule or like he had uh, an a bat or something like that? It was it was uh, like oh god, I can't remember exactly how that happened. Um, but it was. Like was I don't day. know how I. There was some apparently he was short for a batting title, and somehow I think he was given extra at bats. I think it was, and he right. won a batting title because of that. I don't remember that's, what year. That's that what been. it was. It was the batting title part of it. it wasn't the yeah. four hundred part of it? Right. Right. May twenty fifth, oh. nineteen fifty three, in route. Uh, to a 10 to three Braves victory over Cincinnati at County stadium, Max Sircant establishes a major league record by striking out eight consecutive batters, a oh feat God. not matched until oh. hall of famer, Tom Seaver mows down 10 straight San Diego hitters in 1970. After his streak reaches seven, the Milwaukee Moundsman endures a 35 minute rain delay before getting oh. Andy Semenik leading off in the fifth inning uh, to look at a third strike to set the mark. Now, th think about this. Like, that is, um, back then, it was like probably nothing. You have to sit through the rain delay, and then you come back, right? Yeah. I bet you that he might not even pitch that today. They, right. they go they go straight to middle relief, you know, after yep. a, a rain delay. Yeah, they said it was the fifth. Is that what you said? It was the fifth inning? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah who knows? Very possible. Yeah, very interesting. And I, and uh, I didn't know much about Max Rakan. And so like, it was, it I was just love his little... Popeye arms there. Oh, you know, yeah, he <laughs> he's, like he's so not to awesome. punch me in the face. Totally. May 25th, 1981. Some more Red wow. Sox history. This is 40 years ago, joining Ty Cobb, Stan Musial and Hank Aaron. Carl Yastrzemski becomes the fourth major leaguer to appear, appear in 3,000 games. Wow. Yaz makes it a memorable uh, one by scoring the winning run in the Red Sox 8-7 to victory over Cleveland at Fenway Park. Now, I remember having uh, this. This is... Um, I was going to say, that's 81 Fleer. 
the a1 fleer yeah and it was like yeah, the first year of that as uh yeah right i, I think they, i believe a so of, a whole bunch of cards came out during that time because don was, was 81 and i'm pretty sure fear was as well yeah so there was a lot of competition this year so like and then this was not on that um not on like the cardboard that you have here it was kind of like a different kind of uh, paper stock. um yeah. uh, paper stock okay. that that and uh i never liked it as much but i always thought it was unique um, and they had like cards like this and, and some other uh, fun ones together. The photography was actually, I, the, I remember seeing it. I think Keith Olbermann, if I'm not mistaken, when he was a kid, they used some of some of his pictures. Oh my gosh. Uh, like he was in the stands taking pictures. <laughs> oh, and that's wow. what they used for these because they didn't have enough pictures. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Can you, so can you imagine that? You know, it's like what? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> totally. And out of why I said it's 81, this is obviously an 82 Fleer card, out of what I was thinking there. Technically, if I get technical. Oh, yeah, you're right. Be but it, it, it's from the 81. It's, it's Right. But 81. I just realized, like, wait, duh. If it's yeah, an 81 right. game, it's going to be an 82 set. That's right, because they're always a uh, year after. Right. May 25th, 1998, Cardinals first baseman Mark McGuire becomes the first player in Major League history to hit 25 home runs before June 1st when he connects – off John Thompson, uh, not, not the former Georgetown. I was, was going to uh, say, player. I'm like, wait a minute. I wonder he got 25 home runs in the off coaches. Did he get number 26? Did he get number 26 off of a Jerry Tarkanian? <laughs> That'd be awesome. And then Nick uh, Vitale gave up a couple. You get you know? Nick Vitale, Coach K. Uh, yeah. In the bottom of the first frame uh, for the team's lone run in a 6-1 to one loss to the Rockies at Bush Stadium. A lot of people don't remember this, but I do because I'm a Cardinal fan. Uh, during Mark McGuire's run that year, the Cardinals were terrible. And uh, I remember even saying, I go, I wish the, uh, the Cardinal team was having as much success as Mark McGuire is. Um, but that's, that's baseball. Um, in 1997, though, Mariners outfielder Ken Griffey Jr. hit 24 home runs before June. So that was wow. the record before that. Wow. So, um, yeah. So uh, Big Mac throwing uh, the... the uh, with a steel bar in the spokes <laughs> of baseball yeah. history yeah. for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, good time. Yeah, what a time for baseball. <laughs> yes. What in the May 25th, world here? 2006, at Tokyo's Jingu Stadium, California born Rick Guttersmans, Gutter, let's see, Guttersman, boy, that's a tough one too, becomes the first pitcher to throw a no hitter in interleague play in Japan. The former Padres minor leaguer uh, holds the Golden Eagles hitless as the Yakult Swallows beat Rakuten six to nothing. So I thought that was pretty awesome. And I love the American card. I love I love this. I love the Swallows logo there in the corner. That's that's really cool. And you know what? It's this is like this is the only really thing I could find on this, and it was a mm -hmm. card, um, and that was the only kind of documentation that I saw, like pictures or anything. That's awesome. So. Yeah, super cool. Uh, at Jingu Stadium. Now, D Jingu Stadium has like a lot of New Japan pro wrestling history, right? They, they did a, they've done a couple shows. They've done like two shows I'm aware of. They did one last summer and they did one back in like 1999 with like, I think they did like an explosive barbed wire match of Onita against the Great Nita, which would be, right. which would be the Great Muta. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Great Muta versus the Great Nita. I'm sorry. Onita did his version of the Great Muta. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, I had my yeah. facts, but whatever. And then uh, I can pull yeah, stuff was, like that out of my head. I couldn't remember what happened in, you know, last week, but I can tell you what happened in 1897. <laughs> that's, that's why I go to you. That's I awesome. know. <laughs> May 25th, 2011, t only 10 years ago, this happened. In the 12th inning of an eventual mm. 7 to 6 loss to Florida, the Giants lose catcher Buster Posey for the season as a result of a brutal collision at home plate with Scott Cousins, who go who scores uh, the go-ahead run. An MRI will confirm oh. last season's Rookie of the Year has a fractured left fibula and three torn ligaments in his left ankle and will need season-ending surgery to repair the damage. Now, I had a lot of trouble trying to find a picture that didn't make me, um, you know. Cringe? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I was even going to put something up like a, like a censored thing because it, this, this was like one of those things, like, you know, I obviously, uh, I, I grew up a, a Cardinal fan and the giants, you know, for that stretch of, you know, three years, uh, six years actually, um, 
I like beat up the Cardinals, but but Buster Posey, I mean, like who who can't be a fan of him? And like he's uh, just a good guy, good player, um, and you know, only in his second year, up and coming player, and uh, to see this was like it was so brutal, and um, you know. They're the actual, I mean, they called the Buster Posey rule, but it's MLB rule 7.13, uh, which they actually instituted, which I, w- I was interested in the timeline of this. So this happened on May 25th, 2011. Uh, Matt Trainer um, is injured in a collision at home plate uh, just a couple, like in July of that year. In 2013, uh, Deonor Navarro exited the game after a collision uh, October 17th, uh, Alex Avila is injured in the ALCS. So it was kind of building up, uh, yeah. this, this kind of like case of like trying to protect the catchers. Um, and then the rule was actually implemented on February 24th, 2014. Oh, so wow. it took, it took a, a longer than you would wow, think. Man. Well, it I mean, actually... way back when it was like, such a famous play was, was, uh, Pete Rose running over this catcher right. Ray Fossey. And that was in the all-star game. And it more or less like that guy was never the same after that. Right. All-star catcher. And I don't know how much of a career he had after that. No wonder you told me to be careful sliding home today. Totally. Jeez. It's happening a lot. I'm watch. I'm, I watch, I've been watching. And, and this was, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that, that was going to be part of my discussion on this. I'm noticing that there's so much aggressive play right now. Like for instance, yeah. like Tat, Fernando Tatis, you know, the way mm-hmm. he goes in the bases, yeah. Um, I, as I told you, uh, Marcelo Zuna today actually exited, um, with it, with a dislocated, I think pinky, um, jazz Chisholm t- t- twice tonight. Like, like he went into like third base tonight and second on, a, on like a double and called out both times. Um, uh, like, like as if like they're, they're diving like into a swimming pool and it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, that that and and I remember hearing a long time ago um, that I, it's funny because there's there's kind of like a infamous picture I could probably look it up, uh, but like Tommy Lasorda is like showing actually how to slide in Dodger yes. spring training, yep. and I, I don't I don't think that's taught much anymore, um, the proper way to slide, um, and people are like getting hurt though like hook sliding is like is like. It, it's like you know when you see people do it, it's it's pretty amazing. But let, um, let Ty Cobb show you how to slide. All right. Oh yeah, that's a perfect example of like what a, what a slide should be. Well, I mean, but not just that. But he was he had the spikes up like he was gonna spike you too. That was yeah. like oh, and that's yeah, baseball. that's another thing. They they yeah. probably would would find somebody these days for spikes up. I mean, I wouldn't like be surprised that. if they're gonna find people eventually if they just run because back in the day it used to be that catcher has to stay there. And he has to hold on to that ball. And if he just gets plowed over by a guy, you know what I mean? I'm waiting for that to turn, you know, it turned that into like, no, you can't run into the guy like that anymore. You know, so it was like a, a it's almost going to be like, you know, hits against a quarterback in football. You yeah. know what I mean? You might have to like yeah. lighten up on a little bit. Yeah. So there's, there, I mean, this is a perfect example of kind of like action reaction. So it's like, for instance, I noticed now that like, that rule has actually created more controversy about, you know, lanes to the plate. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I remember, uh, what was it? Uh, oh gosh, what's his name? He, uh, John, uh, Jonathan Lucroy, when he, uh, uh, Jake Marisnik, um, hit him at home plate. And like, that was all, that was very controversial. Cause like, Oh, shoot, that's you, right. If you establish which way you're going to go, mm-hmm. um, uh, Trey Turner this year has been called out. Like, I mean, he got, got called out in the playoffs, but yeah. like literally running to first base got called out for interfering with, you know, a, a pass ball, like being thrown to first base. So, well, I mean, you had the, you had that play in the world series in 2019 with the, well, that's with what the that's I'm talking about. That was, that was, that's the what other you're play, about. right. Yeah. I was say, that was like, I'm it like, just, that's the one. It just, you know, no, it just, it just happened again. It just happened yeah. again to him Jeez. and he got called out by it. It's, it's like, okay. Uh, it, so basically the, the fielder gets rewarded for a bad throw. Yeah, um, yeah, because he because and and uh, Trey Turner's running the first base. What is he supposed to like? Like we, he can't like, do what it was he supposed to do. He's not even place. looking. It, what's he supposed to turn back and look while he's running full yeah. speed and risk yeah. getting hurt that way? Come exactly. On. So that, that that you just brought up my next point, which is these guys now are the now the runner actually has to like juke and dive before you know instead of going straight to the plate, um, mm. they're actually having to move and which creates more 
you know, indecision and, and yeah. injury possibility. Exactly. I mean, you, you have to shuck and jive, you know, you could just take one step wrong and you can like, you know, destroy your ankle, you know, yeah. Achilles. I mean, geez. And especially if it's a kill, if that's your Achilles, up, that's, that's, you know, that could be career ender. Yeah. 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 And in football, it's, it's uh, a similar thing. Uh, I remember hearing them, hearing them say that they might eventually, and this could happen in our lifetime. Totally. Uh, they might eliminate the kickoff in a football game because it's the only time where everybody's going yeah. like head on full collisions. speed. Yeah. Yeah. So um, very interesting. Well, and very you know what too, like this is how crazy the, the if you guys remember the XFL, the original yeah. one, yeah. you know, they didn't do a kickoff, oh, that's but you, right. remember that's what right. they did. So yeah. for those who don't know the XFL back in 2001, they had put the ball in the middle of the field and have a player from each team start about 10, 15 yards back. And when the whistle goes or whatever, they have to run, and whoever gets the ball gets possession. And of course, that didn't end well. And they, I think, by the end of the season, they got rid of that rule because the people got hurt. You know? Yeah. Oh my god! Obviously, like how, yeah. I mean, that, like how could how could people not get hurt in a situation like that? You know? Do they do something like that in rugby? It seems like something that they do in rugby I'm as well. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I, I try I to think. I, I, I mean, I'm trying to think because I think that maybe they spike that maybe the ref, maybe someone like spike the ball down oh, and they'll be guys kind of so like a tip off. I want to say that's that's probably. I think it's kind of like that. Yeah, I know that they do like a scrum, uh, but it's like, yeah. uh, but it, it's it's different. It's only when like the offense has the ball. So yeah, mm. very interesting. So uh, great discussion here. I, I love it. Um, also, ten years ago on May 25th. Yankee closer Mariano Rivera becomes the first pitcher to appear in 1,000 games for the same team. Wow. In 2011, the 41 year old Panamanian right hander, who has compiled uh, 572 saves at that time and, 72, and 75 wins during his 17 seasons with the Yankees, is closing in on the all time saves record established by Trevor Hoffman with 601. He would eventually finish with 652. I, can't, wow, I just remember crazy. when it when, when, when back, you know, we were going up, it was like saves weren't even really a thing until like the 80s. You know? yep. mm -hmm. but it's like 300 was the record for a while. And that's like, oh my gosh, 650. Yeah. And Lee Smith was just like, you know, like, eh, he has like 300. Meh. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, so think about that. You said 512 saves in a thousand in a thousand games to that point. That's Five, over 572. Over, 572. So almost 60% of his appearances converted into a positive oh, decision. A win. Yeah. Basically. That's crazy. That's, that's nuts. crazy. Yeah. Unbelievable. We'll, we'll never, we'll never see that. And think about this. The, the thing about Mariano Rivera is they knew what pitch was coming. They literally, yeah, oh yeah. he, Oh, he relied yeah. on one pitch. Yeah. yeah. That's always been the thing about him. It's like, they knew it was coming. They still couldn't hit it. Crazy, crazy. So let's finish with this one. This is this is a fun one. I I actually like this one a lot. Um, um, on May twenty fifth, twenty thirteen, Angel Pagan becomes the first Giant to hit a walk off inside the park home run since Bill wow. Terry accomplished the feat at the Polo Grounds in nineteen thirty one. A Giant, yeah. Very good. And a Giant. That's right. The Don't center fielder's 10th inning two-run round tripper gives San Francisco a dramatic 6-5 wow. wow. victory over Colorado. I told, I remember watching this game. Me too. Me too. And, oh, really? Yeah. He hit mm -hmm. it into a triples alley, and it just took a crazy bounce. Mm -hmm. uh, not not It wasn't as high as uh, Ichiro's um, in the All-Star game, but it hit the base of the wall and like bounced uh, into left field. And uh, what a, what an awesome play! Now, uh, as you see here, if you look straight, there's a uh, third base coach Tim Flannery who ran actually, all the way with him. He yeah. ran all the way with him, and uh, then just like this walk and kept on running uh, off the field. Um, I thought this was like such a fun play, um, and uh, and 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 kind of unfortunate for Colorado. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was. Um, well, this wasn't the year that the Giants won the World Series, but man, they were so good during those mm -hmm. early. Uh, yeah, this is an odd year. You know, they yeah. didn't win the odd years. <laughs> yeah, but they were still super good. So, oh yeah, and I I love the name Angel Pagan. It's so yep. amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that is this day in history. Actually, Cowboy Jack Durango has a very good question. While I uh, switch it to Card Wars uh -oh. here, um, 
you have a time machine uh, to get back to one baseball game. Which one do you go to? I, I don't know. Hmm. I have, I, I'm going to need some time to think about that one. I think I got to come back, you know, I, cause I went to so many games back in the, in the 1800s and 1900s. I mean, I, <laughs> how do I need to go back and kind of watch another one, you know? Exactly. That's a, that's a really great question. Hmm, that is a good question. Because I'm like, as an Angel fan, what? I mean, come on. There's not as much history as of like other franchises. You know what I mean? You know, like maybe like a Hank Aaron hitting 715 or, you know, I would think you want to think like maybe like those historical moments. Yeah. Very or something like a Jackie right? Robinson first game. You know, can you imagine going to that game? What, oh, that, wow. what that might have been like just for the historical perspective, you know? Barry Bonds hitting 72 or any one of the, any one of the games that, you know, in the in the home run chase with with Sammy and and McGuire, going to Cal Cal Ripken's record breaking consecutive game, like anything like that. I mean, oh, here's a, here's some uh, the '88 World Series Gibson oh, yeah. run. I mean, that would have been amazing to see. Oh, classic <laughs> the bump, the bump. <laughs> so the, the Brewers game 163 was actually a super exciting game. Yeah, I remember. I do remember that one as well. That's a, that's a, actually a really good one. Come on, you, um, I mean, you think about like old stadiums if you want to go like Apollo mm-hmm. Grounds or mm-hmm. like Ebbets Field. You know, you want to see Wrigley back in the day or, or, um, yeah, see, look, see, this is what I'm kind of surprised. It's more recent selections from people. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking it'd oh, be, this... I'm like, there you go. Maybe with that. Because yeah. the story was too, it's, I think, I think it was, was it Garrick did two home runs that day, I believe? I think that was a story from the oh, oh okay. pride, uh, pride of the Yankees. I think that was I've never in the movie. I don't know if that's accurate, but apparently he probably was get two home runs for the uh, for that kid. Yep. Oh, hey, a great bit if you, if you guys look up uh, SCTV Bay Brew. There's a oh, great yes. parody of, of that of yes. that game. I may have to. I may John have to. John Candy Brew classic. The Bay Brew story with John Candy is tremendous. Yes. Tremendous. Uh, yeah, look it up on YouTube, folks. So that's a good uh, one too, Cowboy Jack. That's a, that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's an amazing one. <laughs> hey, that's a great game. Great game. It, it, it may be Maybe I want to see the Bad News Bears. Maybe I want to see the Bears oh. play the Yankees. Uh, <laughs> that that, that would be a good one, too. That, and, um, <laughs> oh, how about I go that Astro game, huh? How about I go that game against the uh, the two Houston Toros? Let the, let the kids let play. Let them play. Let the kids I can hang play. out with Bob Watson and yell, let them play with him. Just to make you mad. <laughs> see, you open this box. I'm just going to just just poke you. Poke you a little bit. <laughs> I want to see some Major League Baseball. That's what I came to see. That was a, well. That was what was on the marquee, and I expected to be yeah. in, All right. in, in the well, Astros. Well, Michael, did you have a cardinal, an old Cardinal game you'd like to see? Did you think of anything? I didn't oh, really hear a big um, answer from you there. You know that that's a, oh god. You know, uh, actually, Game Six, 2011, would be a really uh, probably the game wow. that okay. I would love. I would have loved to be at. It, uh-huh. I probably would have. Uh, a- I probably would have aged a couple years uh, <laughs> at that game. Um, uh, I would. I would also like to see. Um, you know, it'd be fun to see like uh, some of the some of the one the games that like. Like I wouldn't uh, like the games in Cardinal history, like from the '40s, like the Gas House Gang and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean the games watch, that I, you know, I have no knowledge of. I have no even watch. Like you know, the, I think they won the series in '46. That was a great series. You know, I, I went. I went to all those games. You know. That was a good series. Yeah, but if yeah. you're a Cardinal fan, totally. And and actually, and, and uh, I mean, we, we can talk about this later because I, I have a I have a whole bunch of stuff that I'd like to do on Patreon. It's actually like yeah. little uh, little shows about like stuff like the Gas House Gang and yeah. you know stuff like that. Like there's a whole bunch of things that like a lot of people don't know um, about like you know back in the back in the day. And uh, yeah, we should definitely kind of make uh, some time for that. Uh, but let's get to baseball card pack wars. That's something we always right. uh, look forward to. Um, here are the baseball card pack war standings. Kevin, back to five hundred. Yes, Mister uh, five hundred. Mister five hundred. Oh my gosh. I hey, I was not given that name. Alice Cowboy Jack called me that. That's so pretty I, awesome. I, I would Mr. not go up on that. I'm on myself. Mister Tuesday night uh, is also you could probably have as well. That's that's pretty funny. <sighs> I'm not gonna give it. I don't give myself nicknames. <laughs> uh yeah uh, kevin and angelo uh went two and two last week i went uh took the collar uh, uh going uh oh and four for the second straight week i think or uh i i, I might have won one 
um, but not not doing well. Um, but yeah, so some good stuff here. Here are the pack war rules. Uh, we'll walk you through it. Looking for relics and autographs. Uh, first and second round, you get one point. Uh, third round, you get two points. Uh, looking for Brewers card because we drink up. And uh, Cowboy Jack Durango drinks after every card. Mandate. Yeah. Make it happen. And I got to say, we didn't get any Brewers last week at all for the first yeah. time ever. We need to make up for that. Yeah, that's true. We that's got true. two of these bad boys to get through. It's a nice night. It's a nice warm night here in Southern California for a for you know for Music City Light. Yes, and, I think uh, Jack like that nickname. Tuesday night, oh, July. No. I, was just say that. <laughs> I like that. Oh my gosh! Some, some other, some other. That's amazing. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, not, we will not get shut out this week. I no. um. So uh, with that, uh, Kevin. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Drinking straight vodka. All of right. course he is. It's Jack. I, of course he is. Yes. Oh, Good. I'm glad to know people have their beers card is joining us. Thank you so much. I, All right. Uh, I, I pulled your uh, comment, but I didn't greet you formally. Welcome, sir. All right. Uh, I'm going to do, you know, uh, you know what? Go first. You, you go. Like never go first. I'm going to go first. Exactly. What are we starting with? Uh, we're going to go for uh, opening day uh, 2021. All righty. Let's do it. Seven cards. And uh, starting off with, uh, well, you know, technically he's a brewer now, Colton Wong. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but he's, a, he's a cardinal here. Uh, Whatever. Let's do, uh, this is Justice Sheffield for the uh, Mariners. Get your beers ready. We are not shut out. It is Haterade, Josh oh, Hater. There you go. On my fantasy team, doing well. Thank you, sir. Zach Greinke. Uh We got a uh, former Brewer, uh, Jesus Aguilar. Uh, f- uh, current uh, Diamondback, uh, Dalton Varsho, uh, who I think just got sent down because Carson Kelly came back. And the Legends of Baseball. You're going to like this one, Kevin. All right. No runs, All right. no hits. Little Johnny Bench. No errors. Yep, no runs, no no runs, no drips, no errors. That was Krylon. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Is that Valvoline? No, uh, Krylon. Oh, Krylon. That's right. Oh, that's spray right. Spray paint. Yes, I know. That's right. Okay, I, okay, I, I, Angelo. Uh, we're gonna educate here. There's uh, Johnny Bench used to do uh, spray paint ads for Krylon. Yes. And he'd say no runs, no drips, no errors. Yep. And I so totally there you go. That. Yep. Yes, there you go. There's the history, and I'm gonna throw it to you. All right, 2021 opening day. Let's see what we got. I'm going to have to look up some of those commercials now on YouTube after the show. Yes. <laughs> Dustin May. Ian Anderson, rookie. Charlie Blackman. Jose Abreu. Jorge Soler. Zach Gallen, future stars. And opening, uh, outstanding opening day for 2000, Pudge Rodriguez. Coming right. off his AL MVP season of 99, Rodriguez right. kept the good, good vibes going on t- 2000 opening day. The Rangers catcher clubbed a three-run homer in the third, a two-run shot in the fifth. He also drew an eight-pitch walk during his five-RBI performance to drive a 10-4 win over the White Sox. Very good. And... Also and? had a home plate collision, I think, in 2003 for the Marlins, and that clinched their. Was it what, was it for the Marlins that he did that? It was a. It was like I think a so. Wild card game, and he like held I the ball. I, I don't remember which one would have been, but I, I, I remember, yeah, he held the ball. Yeah, yeah. I th- that was 2003. So another home. That was that was the, uh, all of that ball. That was the uh, when he pulled the ball out of the glove and like. Yeah, he like held it oh, up. That's right. Yeah. Of course, kind of like a Dikembe Mutombo moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. All right, I'm starting off with Tony Gonsolin. Wilson Contreras. Brady Singer. Nelson Cruz. Corey Kluber. Now, not on the Rangers. I was like, wait, what? Uh, J.D. Martinez. 
and my 2021 opening day of the New York Mets. All right. All right. What do you got, Michael? So my high card is my Zach Greinke at 114. Oh, geez. What happened? That doesn't sound very impressive. It doesn't. Ooh. I have Zach Gallen at 149. Oh my right. gosh, you guys. Come on. Don't make this so easy for me. Jeez. Oh my God. I mean, because I have Brady Singer, 167. Oh, uh, Nelson Cruz, 189. Oh. Or Wilson Contreras, 211. 211? Oh my God. Yeah. I know. I was like, you guys didn't, you guys got, I'm like, what happened? Yeah. All right. Um, I uh, speak. I wanted to speak on the if sports cards here. Yeah, uh, I actually saw um, his son's uh, major league debut. Um, oh wow! In in, uh, in San Francisco, I was actually there for that. Uh, and uh, I think he was facing uh, like Jake Arrieta when uh, he went from the Cubs to the Phillies for the first time. Oh. So, actually, Cubber Lang was at that too. I don't oh, think right he on. even knows that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I believe this is. Uh, we're going to do this one. This is our final pack that we all have for 2021 Tops Heritage. Yes. Oh, no. I, I actually have two. I oh, have, that's yeah, right, because I, I knocked I you two, out last week. Two, Sorry. I have two also. What? Yeah. How do I only have... I oh, you're was, right. I'm sorry. There's my other one. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It fell out of my older. We had them all, like, bundled up there. My bad. All right. Well, let's see what we got here. We have Kenta Maeda. I love that. It was a great picture. Uh, 2020 NL postseason, Tatis, two home runs, secure a win. Mm. Danny Duffy. Alex Bregman in action. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing this guy's shirt because this is episode 56. So, wearing a Cole Calhoun angel shirt. Nice. There he is on the Diamondbacks now. We got Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Justin Dunn, Kyle Tucker, and one of my favorite names in baseball and did something very impressive last week, Mr. Spencer Turnbull. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. My God, six, six no-hitters this year. That's nuts. Yeah. Against oh, yeah. three teams. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, go for it, Angela. All right. 2020. Try after you start off hot, Michael. Come on. I need some mojo from you. All right. We got Reese Hoskins. Mookie Betts in action. Miggy. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. in action. Albert Pujols. Jake Odorizzi. Mike Trout. Tim Anderson and Rafael Montero. Nice. Okay. So this this is actually the pack that I would have opened last week, but I got eliminated uh, when uh, Kevin yeah. got a relic. So yep. he knocked me out and then lost, which I couldn't be yeah. more proud about. Of course. Of course. <laughs> the fun part about all this, right? I know. All I right. should let you open your pack. I'm sorry. Yes. Wow. Actually, uh, 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 Phil does remember that. That's right. We hit 21st uh, Amendment Brewery oh, right and then, uh, yeah, then hit the game. Very, very good. Uh, uh, here, uh, Speaking of the Giants, Jeff Samarja. <laughs> Double word score. Uh, now, uh, well, he's on Pittsburgh here, but he's actually on the Nationals now, Josh Bell. Yep. Uh, now a Angel, but on the Reds here, Rezel Iglesias. Making us nervous, uh, plenty of games already. <laughs> Yo, and, and, and uh, as, as someone who had him on his fantasy team, uh, that's going to happen all year long, by the way. Yeah. Well, then he's, he's a perfect Angels closer. Yeah. Per, per, the, perfect angel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he, he definitely fits the description of an Angels yeah. closer. Um, uh, Bo Bichette, having a great year this year. Uh, you may recognize this guy, Clayton Kershaw. Oh, yeah. He's been around for a while. <laughs> you may remember this guy for his racial uh, facial uh, 
uh, gimmick, uh, Yuli Guriel. Uh, <laughs> you Darvish uh, definitely likes him. Uh, Zach Elfin, which I think is, um, I think he's pitching today, or maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, Phillies Zach Elfin or uh, Zach Wheeler. Sorry, Zach Wheeler, Zach Elfin or go. Zach Wheeler, and then Mike Talkman uh, for the Yankees. All right, so geez. Kevin. We we were we went we went bone dry after you started off hot here. Uh, yeah. For this, uh, I have Danny Duffy, which is three thirty one. Oh, three thirty one. Yes, Angelo? sir. Jake Odorizzi, uh, three fifty one. Oh, there you go. Well, that's going to be tough to beat, but I think I can do it with 355. Oh. Well, if, the, if the one Zach doesn't get you, the other one will. Yep. <laughs> Zach. There you go. You're back. Zach Saber. You're back, you're back in that New York groove. Uh, yes, I Exactly. All right. So uh, I decide uh, what the. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Uh, Chad M says the. Uh, Major League Baseball oh on a gosh. pace for 19 no hitters. <laughs> you know, I would have, I would have scoffed at that, but I'm, I'm totally in. It, it can oh, happen. Yeah. Why not? How could, how can the most elite players um, be so futile? Well, there is, you know, you said there's three teams that have been no hit twice already, which that's insane, you know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go with. Uh, let's see here. What would be a, a good one? Um, you know what? I'm going to go for... Um, actually, this is interesting. So I'm going to go with cards uh, from zero to one... Uh, or not zero. Uh, from one to a hundred. Okay. So okay. Any, any numbers in between one and a hundred. So okay. let's go for All right. that. All right. That's something new. There you go. Okay. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to do here. Oh. Uh, this, is, this is 2019 top of the class. Um, this is uh, kind of a special insert. Uh, only for only five cards. Uh, so hopefully. I, I'm feeling uh, it's all, a low number under, set, sir. All under 100. So I yeah. guess I, it, w it would have to be, right? But And inserts will not count for this, correct? Correct. Uh, no, no inserts. Okay. Base. Yeah. Just want to make sure it's all base. Okay. So this is going to be very interesting. So, um uh, Justin Verlander, and uh, okay, so let's see here. So this is, it says uh, TC40. I guess that's the way that this thing goes. Yeah, 40, so yeah, that's, number that's 40, one. so you're good. Trey I, Turner, I think they're all going to be. Yeah, Trey Turner, so that's uh, 82. Uh, Watch we'll be a 100 card set. Another Brewer. That, that's hey! Good we'll take that. Uh, and that one is, uh, oh, just making it at 98. Hey, there you go. Well, I'm telling you, I think it's a 100-card set. All right. Um, this is the uh, uh, Mookie Betts on his former team. Uh, this, but this is a uh, Celebrate Tops. Right. So that's card. the insert. Gotcha. Uh, pitching tonight for the Yankees. Uh, Garrett, oh, no, no. He's actually he's not. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Max Scherzer, but this is Garrett Cole. Pitched yesterday. Uh, this one is uh, 41. And uh, TC7, this is Ozzy Alby. So all five, or actually one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. Yep. So very good. Five, nothing. Oh, that worked out. Um, and then, uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go Angela. All right. Let's see what we got. By the way, Michael, hmm. neither Zach were pitching for the Phillies today. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. Who, who am I thinking of? I'm thinking. I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm probably a day behind then. The, the Rays lost today, though. There's your, there's your, there's your current oh, baseball did they story. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a. Oh, that's. A, oh, this could be a tough one. So I got 2020 Stadium Club, which I think Ooh. is a 300 card set. Uh oh. But there's there's good autographs and relics in this, right? Oh, okay. There is. All right, so we're gonna kick it off with uh, Jeff Bagwell, 172. Cool. Love Stadium Club. AJ Puck, 240. Awesome. Cool card. Trevor Bauer, 167. Hitting. Look at this, man. Ichiro. Look at that. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's a great card. 
244. Uh-oh. Tommy Pham, 287. Oh, man. Jeez, man. Wow. Uh, we got Francisco Lindor, 191. Uh, Isan Diaz, 258. Oh, and my last card is an uh, insert of um, In the Wings, Kesson Hira, who I saw. Hey! And it's a brewer. Yeah. So All right. Salute. You, may, you may have got shut out, but at least you got a brewer. It's a winner in my book. Oh, yeah, right. I'm up. Sorry. I missed that beer. All right, I have um, eight cards here. Alan and Ginter. Remember how how well the, that my last pack was that I opened with all the yeah. cards spent. <laughs> so this one goes better than that, right? All right, hang on. Sorry, getting getting number two ready. You know, this is the last pack, but whatever details. Okay. Yeah, the, the, these are uh, these are sixteen ounce, but they're uh, crushable. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty light. Yeah, Especially for us, Mr. IPAs over here, you know. All right, starting off with Ableton Simmons, number 218. Uh, we got Steve Carlton, number 60. So there's one. Uh, Frank Thomas is number 96. So that's Ooh. two. Uh, actor and comedian Nick Thune. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right or not. Oh, yeah. How awesome. But he's number 170, so that does me no good here. No. Uh, we have Eddie Murray. There we go. But one of the go. better, uh, the, a beer I really want to try out there. What's it? The, yeah, why don't you get Steady Eddie ready there? There you go. Savon Q, look. See? Look how beautiful that is. Uh, and for the sake of our game, he is number 57. So that's three. I got here uh, Phil Necro. Number 344. Uh, I'll say, I guess this doesn't count anyway, but my mini is Jock Peterson. But it's number 184. So I don't know if they do the entire run of that. No, yeah. it's, a, it's part of the base set. The mini it's is part, part of yeah, the base set. Right. Okay. And then uh, Reach for the Sky. This is the Chrysler building. So that's nice. an insert. That doesn't count. So I guess I unfortunately only have Three. So, congratulations, Michael. Hey, Michael. Wow, back back in the high life again, as uh, Steve Winwood would say. Yes, you're back in the or you're back in the saddle again, as uh, yeah. You know. Oh, uh, Aerosmith. Yes, or Gene Autry. <laughs> hey, I say Gene Autry. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Either one works for me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No, either doesn't want some rock or some country. You know. Yes. Uh, right. So, uh, yeah, three and one. So, does that, there you go. Uh, does that, does that put my winning percentage b below the Mendoza line now? Oh, you might. Oh, I don't, I don't Maybe. think so. Let's, let's, let's. I was at 210. I was at 210. You have the bad, you have the Bob Euchre batting average, so we can call you Mr. Baseball. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So Mendoza line is, is, uh, that's awesome. That's another one that we'll have to talk about. We, we should do yeah. uh, Definitely educate people on that one too. That's awesome. All right, so let's do it. Let's do some uh, trivia before uh, we wrap up. We want you to participate in this. We're gonna test your knowledge of baseball. This is a uh, from the Rookies 1986 Magic Motion Baseball Trivia Card. So remember, these questions are from 1986. So here's the cards and uh, here are the uh, here are the questions. Who is the only player to win wow. Rookie of the Year, MVP, and Cy Young Award in his wow. career? Here wow. are your four choices. Don Newcomb, Sandy Koufax, Robin Roberts, or Whitey Ford? Whitey Ford. Wow. So we want definitely you in the comments, please. Uh, so, the rookie of the year, MVP, and the side. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Okay. Now, all I say throughout a career, not like yeah. in one season. Yeah. Through 86. Obviously. Through 86. Wow. Right. Yeah, because all these guys would have played primarily in the 50s. That's right. Yep. 50s into the 60s. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I'm torn. 
So, um, I, I, Angela, I, uh, let's let's hear your thought process here. So, are, you, are, are you just guessing, or are you just no. going to do an educated guess? No. So my, I'm torn between Don Newcomb and Sydney Koufax. Yeah, same here. <laughs> there's a there's only there's only one out of the three uh, awards that I'm that's questionable for one or even both. Quite honestly, um, yeah. The, I mean, I'm not sure on Sandy for Rookie of the Year. That's one I'm not. As, I'm, that's one I'm not as sure on. I'm like, it's one of those two. I'm just trying to decide who. I'm like, because Sandy was was what my intuition said, but I'm like, I don't remember if he won Rookie of the Year. Yeah, actually, my initial intuition looking at the options was Whitey Ford, but then the more I thought about you know, Don and Sandy kind of swayed my decision. I'm going to go with Don Newcomb. All right. I mean, my gut told me Sandy go back. I will not be surprised if you're right, but I'm going to go with Sandy. Okay. Then you would be with uh, bubble pug who said Sandy Koufax. Uh, also Colin says uh, Sandy Koufax as well. Cowboy Jack Durango with a Don Newcomb. Ugh, I, I lost M. for sure. Chad Allen with a <laughs> hey 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 come on Sandy Koufax anybody else want to get in on the chat and uh, there's no love for Robin Roberts or uh, Whitey Ford or Whitey I mean, Ford there that, that's like I, one of those things where it just pops up like you're like oh like I've never yeah. heard of this I've heard of this guy yeah. but I don't know what he did well, I mean and, Robin Roberts is a Hall of Famer you know right? but I believe yeah you know I, but I but I don't remember him ever winning a Cy Young or anything like that or MVP you know. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's do it. Here is the answer. It is Don Newcomb. It is Don Newcomb. Newcomb. It is Nuke. Ah, he uh, started in the Negro Leagues with the Newark Eagles in 44 and 45, played with Brooklyn, Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, 49 to 51, 54 to 58, uh, played with Cincinnati, which I, I don't even remember uh, oh, that... at all, uh, with 58 to 60, and then uh, finished with the Cleveland Indians in 1960. Uh, was a uh, first pitcher to win the Rookie of the Year, Most Valuable yep. Player, and Cy Young Awards, uh, as we said. Uh, he was the Rookie of the Year in 49, uh, mm -hmm. MVP and, and Cy Young Award winner in 56. That's 56 was the inaugural year of the Cy Young Award. He won the mm -hmm. very first Cy Young mm -hmm. Award. That's the other thing I was trying to figure out because I didn't remember the Cy Young Award being, being around in like the 40s. Right. I mean, not that it would have mattered because, like I said, all those guys were coming up in the 50s. Yep. I think Whitey Ford would have been, I don't know if Whitey Ford started before Newcomb or not. They would have been pretty close. In 49, he became the first black pitcher to start a World Series game. He was in 51, he was the first black pitcher to win 20 games in one season. Um, this distinction would not be achieved until 2011. Who did it? Wow. Somebody actually equaled this in 2011. I'm like, gosh, I can't believe it. Yeah, it, 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 and, and when I say it, you'll be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so 10 years ago, this happened again. I can't, I know, we're all just like, huh? Nothing. Justin mm. Verlander. Wow. Oh, man. Yep, mm. he did, uh, he, he was a rookie of the year in 2006. He was a Cy Young and MVP in 2011. Actually, I had the Cy Young in 2019 as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, by the way, in 1956, when um, when he had this amazing season, he was 27 and seven. Wow. Yeah, my God, unbelievable. And okay, so this brings up another point that I wanted to make. So uh, eventually, and and uh, I, I, I again, you you guys are behind the scenes now. We're we're actually having a uh, beer baseball blog meeting. Um, on Patreon, I'd like to do a thing either for, for about half hour to an hour. I'd like to talk about, um, I, I saw this great article on, uh, since the, uh, it's going to be the universal DH probably next year. It's, it's, it's basically about hitting pitchers and the greatest hitting pitchers of all time. You would be amazed. That'd be awesome. Don Newcomb was an excellent hitting pitcher who compiled a, a batting average of 271 with 15 home runs and was used as a pinch hitter, a rarity for pitchers. Wow. Oh, yeah. Nowadays, it's what? Just Is it DeGrom I'm thinking of? 
Uh, oh, remember, uh, um, uh, uh, Bum Bum Gardner. Bum Gardner, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the Grom has as well, though. Yeah, Zach Greinke is another good yeah. hitting pitcher. Yeah, I can't really count Otani in that, you know. Well, Otani is now the ultimate hitting pitcher. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, I'm like, I can't count him as being, oh, he's a hitter who's pinch hitting. I'm like, dude, the guy hits like all the time. Yeah. I mean, Angel just saw him pinch hit on Sunday. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. He, he's, uh, and I also want to make mention of this. I don't know if I mentioned this before. Remember when uh, at the beginning of the season when there, there was articles about Otani being a bust? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, no, I, I remember that. I'm, come on. Unbelievable. He's having a, awesome uh historical season all right so this is the uh, uh question number two. Oh yeah we have another question we do who holds the american league record rookie record for home runs shenanigans i call shenanigans right ahead on this one all right that's funny that is funny ron kittle eddie murray where's my can my steady eddie yeah Walt Dropo or Al Rosen? So I'm going to say right away, you know why this is shenanigans? Mm. This record was broken the next season in 87 by Mark McGuire. I don't remember how many he finished with. I want to say the old, either the record was 39 or he had 39 home runs his rookie season. I don't recall which of the two it was. Very good, Kevin. Kevin. But now I just can't remember if it's Walt Dropo or Al Rosen who had the, who it was. <laughs> like, Kevin, shoot, you're like I the George remember. Michael I know, Sports I know the older player. There. You're like the George Michael Sports Machine over there. And uh, <laughs> not the George Michael from Wham. I know that. <laughs> I have to I tell know. everybody else. <laughs> I know. Let's go, the machine. And just press a button and it's going to bring up a clip of Mark McGuire breaking the record in 87. Eddie Murphy? Uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yes. There you go. Yes. When he when he, in between uh, filming of uh, coming to America, he he <laughs> established a the American League record. This would be more like trading like Beverly Hills Cop, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is like Beverly Hills Cop yes. era. Or Empire was it was it uh, our Golden Child? Oh, there you go. If we're talking eighty four, eighty five, that'd be around that period. No one yes, remembers sir. Golden Child. Oh, I remember Golden Child. Come on. <laughs> Gosh, of all the Angelo, oh Angelo Golden Child, anything? No, damn it. <laughs> that's <laughs> although I, I, although I, like, yeah, don't go back and watch that one. It's all although right. I did watch Coming to America this past weekend, then the right. new one, yeah. okay? All right, thoughts? Um, uh, so I'm gonna go with Al Rosen. Al Rosen, okay. Any, any, any thought behind that? Al Rosen, just guess. I'm, I was along the lines with. with Kevin, where it's either three or four. Um, so bet between the two, that is purely a wild guess. Okay. I think it's Al Rosen. I mean, if I'm wrong, oh well, but I think it's Al Rosen. Okay, so we have, uh, well, obviously, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Uh, Walt Dropo. We had an Al Rosen out there. Um, no yes. love for Ron Kittle. Yeah. Ron Kittle, a former Ron White Kittle had, Sox. A, had a heck of a start in 80, exactly. two or 83 with the White Sox. I, 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 Daily Sports Talk, are you, are you asking me, is it Rosen? I don't know. We'll, we'll I don't see. know. That's your That's job to tell me. Some golden child oh, there you love. Go. Jack is the golden <laughs> child. Yes. Yes. And the answer is Al Rosen. Yay. Yes. Look at those sleeves. Oh, my God. Or lack thereof. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to see what that Indian logo is on his. Uh, like, this just looks, I'm like, whoa, look at that. What is I that? Know. Indian? I mean, uh, Am I allowed I to say that word? I mean, geez. Uh, is that, well, we, we watched uh, earlier. We had the uh, Boston Braves. They had, had yeah. an awesome one. I had yeah. one last week. It was kind of similar to this. Yeah. Um, now, Albert Ro uh, Leonard Rosen, uh, nickname Flip, which is actually a uh, cover Lang. That's actually his, his given nickname by his mom, Flip. Awesome. Right uh, and also the Hebrew hammer. Oh, wow. That, that is actually his nickname. That's great. Uh, that um, only played good. 10 seasons, uh, all for the Cleveland Indians, uh, actually serving four years in the U S Navy uh, during world war II. Um, as I said, he played 10 years, 47 to 56 with the Cleveland Indians, um, as standout on both offense and defense drove in a hundred 
uh, 100 or more runs, five consecutive years, wow. four-time All-Star, um, uh, twice led the league in RBIs, AL Most Valuable Player. Uh, actually, uh, following two decades, he was actually a stockbroker and wow. then uh, became a front office executive and uh, I was actually executive of the year. Uh, he was actually uh, uh, was on the Yankees, Astros, and Giants as wow. like a president and C CEO. So, but you um, read those numbers, and it's like most people wouldn't even know who this guy is unless you know, like a long time baseball fan of the Cleveland area. But you hear those numbers, like, oh my gosh, he was pretty yeah. solid. That, that's pretty. That's a pretty spectacular run there, you know. Yeah. But again, he was playing in a smaller market, I guess. Too, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the Indians only really did something that 54 season where they won like 111 games, but still didn't win the World Series, you know? Yeah, and uh, it said Rosen led the league uh, with 37 uh, home runs in 1950, but lost Rookie of the Year honors to Dropo. Wow. How many so, home runs do you think he had? Uh, 37 and 50. Okay. Um, and tied for the league lead uh, with RBIs with 144. Oh, my gosh. I know. Woo! And you're right. Um, Mark McGuire eventually beat this record. Yeah, it was 87. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember seeing him hit one that season. I I don't remember if what uh, how far it was past the record, but yeah. I remember, and that's how I was like, I think it's Al Rosen because it ain't ring a bell. I don't remember the name otherwise. Yeah. The stuff I, I'll retain. It's, it's awesome. We should definitely do some more research on him. Yeah. He, he seems pretty awesome. Can I can I ask a question? Uh, sure. I. Um, is there going to be questions from rookies 1886 so I can do better at this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just wondering. Is your memory uh, less foggy from back then? <laughs> what memory? <laughs> exactly. So um, you mentioned it last week, uh, Kevin, but I, I definitely wanted to uh, give it full uh, dedication this week. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Rennie Stennant, uh, def, uh, Panamanian, which I wasn't aware of. Uh, professional baseball oh, second baseman uh, just died on May 18th, 2021. Uh, and uh, he played with the Pirates from 71 to 79 and with the Giants from 80 uh, to 81. He was a World Series champion with the Pirates in 79. Um, he was one and, of well, two. Didn't they, did they win in 71 too? Or am I thinking of the wrong year? You're absolutely right. They don't even have that on here. I don't know why. why I don't uh, remember if they won in 71 or... Maybe they did. Yeah, he was he was seventy one. Yeah, okay. That's all. I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. I don't know why they didn't have that in here. That's I'm like, did they lose to the Orioles that time? Yeah, I'm like, I don't two, remember. He's a two-time like, champion. Why why is that not in here? Now yeah, I looked that up. I'm like, wait a minute. Exactly. And, and that's remember, maybe he wasn't on. Maybe he came up late in the season and he wasn't actually on the postseason roster. But he, but he would have if he was on the roster at all, he would have been a champion. Yeah, I guess so. I just thought that was really weird. Okay. So, and then he was a part of that all um, all yeah. black uh, uh, lineup uh, for the Pirates that year as well. Uh, so he is only one of two players to collect seven hits in a nine inning game, uh, which he did in a twenty two to nothing victory over the Chicago Cubs in nineteen seventy five. Um, as we said, he was uh, he was a member of the first all black and Latino starting lineup in big league history, and. Uh, here he is in August 2016, uh, Brandon Crawford. And uh, the, you, know, you know what the difference between Rennie Stennant's uh, seven uh, hit game and, and uh, Brandon Crawford's is Brandon Crawford did it in extra innings. Yep. Mm. Crazy, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, how do you get seven at-bats in a, in, a, in a game? And I mean... I, I, it, uh, that, that's it. That's rare in a seven inning game. I understand yeah. you're blowing them out, but remember, remember, you can't you, you can't pile up uh, runs anymore. That's that's a no no. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you play the game? No. 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 <laughs> yeah. But cheers well, already, Senate. Yes. Solid. Quoted in a cool key song too. That you know. <laughs> Is he really? Yeah, it was like a line. Reggie Stanton, pirate, you can't hide it, or something like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, how awesome! Like was I was randomly like, why is Cool Keith throwing out Reggie Stanton's name in the song? I love it. That's crazy. If, 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 if Ed was on, he, he'd probably be knowing what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's too. That's too. That's funny. funny. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Chad M knew he yeah. was seven for seven again. That's awesome. So, 
All right. So um, if you uh, want to support us here at the Beer Baseball blog, to go to uh, our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. Uh, I actually have some cool stuff planned uh, for the future in this and some exclusive content that you can only get um, uh, ahead of time on Patreon. So I'll definitely talk about that uh, in the coming weeks. You can always support us on our Etsy page. Uh, check out Beer Baseball. And uh, here's where you can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Thank you so much. Uh, for joining us. Um, it's it, always a pleasure. I mean, this has been, I, mean, I can't believe, I, I, I'll say it every week uh, and just change the number. I can't believe we do this every week. Um, and this is our 56th, well, 57th week um, of this. And, and we're not slowing down at all. There's always so much to talk about. Uh, Angelo, did you have anything you want to, oh yeah, please plug uh, your Monday show. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, 56 episodes. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. A couple uh, quick reminders. Don't forget to tune in each and every Saturday to our YouTube page at the Beer Baseball blog uh, for another uh, episode of Beer and Break with Angelo. Uh, and don't forget to tune in on our Facebook, Facebook Live. Every Monday I live stream at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Monday Night Rip. So you can go back and watch Monday Night Rips from the past. Uh, yesterday, I opened a blaster box of 2020 Panini Prism baseball draft picks. This upcoming uh, Monday, I'll be opening up a blaster box of 2021 Panini Diamond Kings baseball. And uh, if you're still uh, around, uh, Ian from Miss Sports Card, thank you for uh, tuning in and for all your support. Um, he just recently hit 15,000 subscribers on oh, YouTube. So, awesome. congratulations, wow. Ian, on that. And uh, my wife and I will be waiting patiently for Wednesday Wife Pack Wars videos that are released. So uh, go check out his sports cards on YouTube if you haven't had a chance already. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, send send uh, some people our way, uh, and uh, and we'll definitely entertain them for a little bit. And then we'll we'll send you anyone that we can. I, I mean, what he has been super supportive of everything that we've done. Uh, or hey, and, uh, we do hoppy hour interviews, you know. You know. Yeah, maybe we <laughs> might have to have them on a hoppy hour. What do you say? If sports cards, are you, you know? into it? Please let us know. Yeah, we, you know, you can come join us and just chat baseball and cards and all that for an hour. That's fine. We, that would be amazing, and we would definitely uh, support that. Great idea, Kevin. Thank you so much, uh, Kevin. Do you have anything that you want to? Oh promote? yeah. I mean, sure. If you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at Lock and Lull. That's L O K N L O L L. I, I always say support your local brewery, support your minor league baseball team. If you go to Radiant Beer Company once a week in Anaheim, you'll probably, I'm there once a week. You'll probably see me there. You know, there you go. I'm, I'm there way too much, especially because I won a hundred dollar gift card to there recently. You did. Oh, and if also, if, if you need some good jokes, be sure to email Jackie Martling at jokeland at AOL.com or. You can call the Jackie the Joke Line hotline, which is five one six nine two two wine W I N E. And if you want, oh, and hey, I'll mention this because I think I mentioned it before. If you if you're an old time baseball fan, uh, you like seventies baseball. I just I finished a book last week called The Captain and Me by Rom Blomberg. Who we, is it Bl Bloomberg Blomberg? We, I might be yeah. we were confused about the pronunciation. The first ever DH of baseball, and he wrote a book with uh, Dan Epstein, uh, author, and talk about his time with the Yankees in the 70s and his time with Thurman Munson. Definitely an unheralded player just reading about him. I'm like, how is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? You know, and probably just unfortunately he passed away, at, I should say at a young age, but after a 10-year career, he passed away in a plane crash. Yeah. But it was really interesting reading about him. It was a period growing up in the 70s I didn't really I – mean, I was born in 75, sorry – 1875 uh, you know, <laughs> learning about that period, relearning about that period, you know, what's going on with the Yankees and then I'm a big Yankees fan. That's why I enjoyed reading it. Definitely. And uh, Dan Epstein is, is going to, uh, you know, hopefully we're going to have him on a either hoppy hour or an interview or to get something in there. Yeah. And, I hope so. Let's uh, get that going. Yeah. And uh, if sports cars uh, confirm me, so let, let's, uh, All right. let's, let's hook that up. Let's play. Um, All right. We have so much planned and uh, check our social media because you might see Kevin and I uh, out in, in the, in the wild. Um, what? 
and there might be some some leather being thrown around and uh whoa and, whoa 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 wait a minute who knows, that, who what knows? kind of tease is this Ooh, no, you leather might, you, what kind you, of leather are we talking so please follow us on all of our social media i'm actually going to throw this out there um uh check us out on linktree uh and look for beer baseball all the things that you can do to support us but also follow us is right here so check that out um and uh for angelo trinidad and kevin lyon i'm michael mondragon saying good night and join us here next tuesday for more craft beer and curveballs good night everyone take care <laughs>